<laughs> You're still watching Ways. Now, each year we commemorate World Tuberculosis Day on March 24th to raise public awareness about the devastating health, social, and economic consequences of tuberculosis as TB and to step up efforts to end the global TB pandemic. The date marks the day in 1882 when Dr. Robert Koch announced that he had discovered the bacterium that causes TB which opened the way towards diagnosing and curing the disease. Now, today, as part of our commitment to enlighten our audience, we have Dr. Gwenga Durojaye joining us via Zoom. Thank you so much, Dr. Gwenga, for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for inviting me. <laughs> All right, so Dr. Durojaye, today is World Tuberculosis Day, and we couldn't pass the opportunity. We just wanted to enlighten people, you know, about tuberculosis. You know, maybe you should just give us a quick summary of what tuberculosis is, and you know probably um, how it's how it's um, transferred or transmitted. Okay, thank you very much. Um, tuberculosis is an infectious disease, and um, it's caused by a special group of bacteria called Mycobacterium tuberculosis. I call it a special group of bacteria because if anyone has infection, uh, many people would have um, or can confess to that or attest to that that when you use other antibiotics, the cough persists. So it's a mycobacterium, a special group of bacteria called mycobacterium tuberculosis. And um, it can affect any part of the body. It can affect the lungs, which is the commonest um, site of infection. It can also affect the abdomen, the abdomen or the abdominal cavity. It can affect the lymph nodes, it can affect the, the spine or the bones can affect the heart and cause, or the covering of the heart and cause what we call TB pericarditis, can affect the linings of the brain, the meninges, and cause TB meningitis, which is common in children, can affect um, even the reproductive organs, can affect the fallopian tubes, can affect any part of the body. Um, the good news about TB is that it is treatable. Um, the commonest, like I said, is um, respiratory TB, and um, the symptom it gives is a cough that is chronic, that is lasting more than two to three weeks. Um, to a point, when it gets to a point, if it progresses, it can produce what we call hemoptysis, that is blood stained sputum. And then it also causes low grade fever. And um, this is one um, sign one could pick, especially for non respiratory tuberculosis, that is, tuberculosis affecting other parts of the body. So it could cause chronic cough with blood stains put um, The other common symptoms are weight loss, unexplained weight loss, especially when one loses more than 10% of the body weight within a month. And then it also causes what we call a drenching night sweat. The person just finds out that you wake up in the morning, your clothes are soaked with sweat. Hmm. Then depending on which part of the body it affects, it can also give some other symptoms. Like in the abdomen, it can cause some fluid accumulation, what we call ascites. And so you just see the abdomen being distended. And then the person keeps having abdominal pain and discomfort. And then it could be due to abdominal TB. If it causes TB pericarditis, like I said, it causes an inflammation of the covering of the heart. And then it gives this, what we call a, a pleuritic chest pain. And um, because as the heart contracts, and moves within that covering, there is pain elicited, you know, in the heart, especially left-sided chest pain. And then if it affects the bones of the back, which is the spine, it can also cause um, severe back pain. And eventually, if it destroys the bones of the back, you have what we call a collapse of that vertebrae or that particular bone of the spine. And so it can start causing um, nerve root compression and which gives severe back pain. It can also affect the lymph nodes, especially the lymph nodes around the neck. And then it can cause um, what we call TMB lymphadenitis. And so you can have swollen lymph nodes, you know, on the neck or whichever part of the body it affects. Um, like I said, common symptoms are cough, Doctor. fever, weight loss, and then drenching night sweats. The diagnosis um, depends on which site is suspected to have TB, but mm. commonly for the respiratory TB, which is the one that affects the lungs, um, diagnosis can be made in several ways. The gold standard is what we call gene expert. Mm. 
there are gene expert machines now available at least thankfully the government has brought that in most government hospitals especially in lagos state and so the sputum sample that is what the person coughs out mm. or produces as sputum can be taken you know to the gene expert machine and within a day you have your results um, already and then if it's tb of the abdomen and there's fluid um, collection ascites like i said part of that fluid can be taken and also taken to the gene expert machine um, now in children um, their stool can be collected stool samples can be collected and also taken to the gene expert uh, machine wow. the other ways to diagnose it is either a chest x-ray or a ct scan of the chest mm. which will show some characteristic changes in the lungs it typically um, tuberculosis affects the upper part of the lungs or what we call the apices and so you see those characteristic changes there could cause cavities could cause other lesions you know in the lungs and then if it's um, tb of the spine an x-ray of the spine will also show some characteristic um, changes like i said there's a, an erosion or a destruction of that bone of, of the spine and then you might have some fluid collection what we call paravertebral abscess okay um, doctor. some Okay, so, sorry to cut you because we have a few questions and we've actually run out of time. Now, this, your team is okay. making me scared. I, just I need to go and check. <laughs> go ahead, John. <laughs> okay, okay, Doctor, um, I have two questions. How can we prevent the spread of TB and how long can a person live with tuberculosis? Mm. Well, to prevent the spread of TB, like I said, the commonest route of transmission is the respiratory TB. So it comes from the droplets, if the person coughs or sneezes, and then, so it spreads faster in an overcrowded environment. So just like we've been doing for COVID-19, if you probably cough or sneeze into your elbow, rather than um, just coughing into the air or coughing into your hands and then you shake the next person and all of that. So, so coughing into your elbow uh, or at this, the sleeve of your, of your shirt or or clothing and then so preventing tb will be to educate people to prevent um, overcrowding and then for children especially I'm, I'm sure most of us right from about 20 30 40 years down the line there have been bcg vaccination to mm. prevent tb although most some people may come still come down with tb later in life mm. but at least it prevents the severe form of tuberculosis okay. so vaccination avoiding overcrowding uh, those are the ways that by which we can prevent uh, tb okay okay doctor you, you've talked about um um what's it called you've talked about coughing into the elbow and that just brought to mind the fact that covid currently what we do to avoid it is you know not to spread it is to cough into our elbows as well so are there different covid has come in just recently but um um, what's it called? Um, tuberculosis. tuberculosis has been around since 1882. So definitely there should be variants of uh, tuberculosis. So what are the variants of tuberculosis currently? Ah. In one minute. There are no variants actually <laughs> because it's not a virus. Mm. Okay. It's a bacteria. bacteria. So it's bacteria, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Mm. Although you have a few other bacteria in that mycobacterium family. You know, you have cancer C and some other names. I don't want to bore us with. Please so don't. unlike COVID, there are no variants. It's just that it can affect any part of the body. And so, like I said, depending on which part is affected, that will determine how you make a diagnosis mm. and then the treatment. So treatment, like somebody asked, how long can one live without treatment? Mm. It's not predictable. Mm. Then it also depends on which part of the body is affected. It can destroy the lungs completely. So if it's not treated, then it can lead to death. But like I said, it's curious. Do you so think we have to so beg we you? <laughs> Will it be eradicated before no, 2020? No, we have to beg the doctor to bring him back. Because sadly, we ran out. I didn't know that uh, this tuberculosis is this serious. So, you know, because I just hear oh, people coughing and all that. You think, you know, but people don't take it seriously. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much, Doctor. Mm. We've really, really had um, an amazing time talking to you. We hope oh. you come back. Maybe we'll now have like an extended one hour conversation on tuberculosis. Oh. <laughs> no problem. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you so much, Doctor. Ooh, we'll take a break. When we return, we'll be talking auto trading. Stay with us, we'll be right back.